Once the editor has started, you're going to be presented with this window, the Unreal Project Browser. This is where we can see our current projects and create new projects, either from scratch or using templates. Let's take a quick look at it. One thing to note during this early access period, this window may change during development. At the top, we have our recent projects. So I have quick access to projects I may have created earlier. In this case, we can see a few Unreal Engine 5 projects. Or if you have a different version installed, you can see this notes, I have Unreal Engine 4.26 for this project. Below this, we have our templates. So for example, I could click on games. It's going to ask me which template I would like to use to start my project and a few default settings. For example, I could create a handheld AR project to quickly get started with AR for iOS and other mobile devices. Or perhaps I wanted to do some virtual reality. The virtual reality template is great because it gets us some hands that work properly in VR, as well as some default locomotion setup. Now on the right hand side, we have project defaults. These are going to change based on the template you're using. In this case, we can see here I have Blueprint as my only choice. Then it'll ask me which platform am I going to target? Now this just sets the defaults for the actual project. Based on your target platform, it'll just things like, are you using Bloom? Are you going to use HDR? It's just some default settings to make it perform well. And we can adjust them, which I will show you later. Also for your target platform, what quality preset? The platform and the presets go together. So for example, we could have mobile with scalable quality and it's going to adjust those settings to make them perform better on mobile to the start. Do you want to have starter content? You can check this or disable it. Starter content is great because it gives us some default meshes, some materials and some textures to accelerate the development of our project. Lastly, we have ray tracing and whether it's enabled or not by default. Below this, we have the location. Where do you want to put this project? You can also browse to choose a specific folder instead of typing it in. And then what do you want the name of the project to be? Now there are a few issues you need to keep in mind with the project name. We can't start them with a number. It has to be an alphabetical character and we can see that in the bottom left. We also cannot use spaces. There are a few other ones. For example, we can't use a minus sign. We can't use a star sign. Any issues will be indicated in the bottom left. Now for our project, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the AEC ArcViz project. So if we go to the architecture, engineering and construction section, and we click on ArcViz, we're going to use this as our starter project. So we have a nice little scene to work with, but you will notice we don't have the options for a scalability or the blueprint or C++ because this project is designed to work out of the box, just like this. Let's go ahead and name our project intro UE5. And you'll notice we have another message. Our project already exists with this name. Projects aren't just a file. It's a folder comprised of all of the content or assets for your project. So in this case, we already have a project intro UE5. We actually saw that up here under recent projects. So I can't use the same name. So let's go back to our architecture, ArcViz, and let's just call this intro. We'll go ahead and not include starter content or ray tracing, and we'll create a project. Now our engine's gonna go ahead and create the project in the background. Depending on if you've used the engine before, you've opened it up and let it process, or if you use these templates, it may look like it's frozen or stuck at a certain point. In this case, we can see 45%. What is going on is in the background, it's creating our project and setting up the files, and it may take some processing time. So depending on the speed of your machine, it may take a few minutes. But once it's done, you'll be presented with your project. Now I mentioned the scalability settings before. I mentioned we have the ability to change our default settings. So if we go to edit, project settings, target hardware on the left, we can find what hardware we're targeting. And here you can see the default settings that the template chose. But let's say we want to put this on something different, maybe VR. If we change our maximum to scalable, it'll let you know, these are the things we're gonna change. And if you apply them, it's going to go ahead, restart the editor, and you'll have those changes. So when you're creating your project, those are just the defaults. This is where you might adjust them. If you happen to load up your project and you notice it's not quite matching what is on my screen, or maybe you've messed with the editor and you've done some exploration, you can always reset everything back to the defaults. Let's go ahead and go up to Window, 
load layout, default editor layout, which will reset our defaults back to what you can see here. Now that we have our layout set to the defaults, let's go ahead and bring our content browser back so we can work with it for the rest of our course. In the top left, we have access to our content browsers. If we click on the content button, choose content browser one, and it will show up in the middle of our screen. Let's go ahead and drag the tab down to the bottom and you see it snaps. When we let go, we now have our content browser docked to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this down a little bit just so it looks a little bit better. And at this point, we have our project set up and ready to go for the rest of our course.